gentlemen, welcome to the Lele Show. Thank you for staying up with us. We're so happy that you're here. <laughs> On tonight's show, we'll be chatting with David Ayello, and later we've got a performance from Maisie Peters with James Bay. You don't want to miss that. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> from the start of the show, <laughs> I've just been doing this behind the desk. <laughs> And I don't know why that's uh, funny, but it always will be. Yeah. From the second, I thought, how long can it, I keep this it's, going for? It's, 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 it's so nice to see a real-world emoji. <laughs> <laughs> exactly what it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's exactly, that's perfect. How are we doing, Kang? How's everyone doing? Yeah, all good? All good? <sighs> yeah. yeah. I'm in a slight Monday funk, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I know. He, di he died over he the died weekend. He died over the weekend. We should, <laughs> um, we should start with that. that uh, at the end of the taping of the show on Thursday, we said Nick come down and he, he fell. <laughs> His head hit every single shelf. <laughs> Ian ran over to him and he was, he was all over the place. So he said, Nick, Nick, are you okay? Are you okay? And he said, he put his hand up. And he said, just make sure you get on that cruise ship. And they just... <laughs> so, we'll miss him. Nick, we, we've loved you being part of the show. <laughs> hey, Pete, Pete, how was your weekend? All good? It was awesome. We had a little bit of a dicey moment. I uh, burned out a blender, but uh, otherwise, <laughs> it was good. Dicey. You burned out a blender. Hey, man, it happens, you know? Even your blender was like, this is too much booze. <laughs> This is too much booze. I'm gonna, I'm gonna burn this out because you're gonna burn yourself silly if you drink this. Yeah, you know, it was trying to protect me. Well, Pete, look at this. Got a gift here for you. This, we absolutely love this. This was sent to the show from Jen Voigt, Vot, Jen Vot, who we love. Jen Vot, look what she has sent. Not for me, not for you, Ian, not for any member of the, of the band, not Reggie. She's made and sent this in for Pete. Look at this! Awesome! Look at this! <laughs> Big up, baby! That's awesome! There you go, Pete. Look at that! Wow. Look at that! Swag. Great work, Jen. Oh, yeah. No, Absolutely this is sensational work. Hey, boss, you know where this would look good? Where? Like poolside with a, with a Mai Tai on a carnival cruise. On a carnival <laughs> cruise? <laughs> Doesn't have to be carnival, does it, Nick? Could be, could sorry, be Virgin. Just... Did you hear about this? Nick, are we allowed to share this on the show? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to say it like that. No, over the weekend, I got an email from Richard Branson himself, direct to my, Sir? To my inbox. Sir Richard? Saying, yeah, Sir Richard Branson, saying, hey, Seen everything you're doing about this week, want to be on a cruise ship. Virgin are launching our new cruise ship. We were supposed to launch last year because of the pandemic. We're launching it. We'd love nothing more than all of you guys to come and do a week of shows on Virgin Cruises. Man, I, I hung out with him on Necker Island. He's a, he's a nice guy. You met up with him on Necker Island? He, he flew me out to Necker Island to... Uh, to perform at this kind of climate, really small group of climate expert summit thing. And you flew there on a private jet? Uh, I can't remember. I think it was a regular plane, and then right. it was a small plane, and then it was a boat. So you took two planes and a boat to talk about climate change <laughs> yep. on Mecca Island. There you go. <laughs> yep, that's right. I didn't talk about it. I For was sure. just entertainment. You were entertainment. I was hey, entertainment. But you've got to say, straight to the source, Branson, love that. Not yes. messing around. No. Nope. Straight to the source. What's the latest with it, Nick? Are we in, are we in chats with them? I, did, I forwarded it on to you. We, we are, yeah. We, I, I am now in direct communication with the heads of Carnival Cruise. Yeah, but what about Virgin? <laughs> <laughs> You're in Feel with the heads of Carnival Cruise. To be clear, are you talking to the heads of Carnival Cruise or are you talking to Sir Richard Branson? <laughs> I'm not trying to compete <laughs> here. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, I haven't talked to, uh, you know, 
Bartholomew Carnival or, or whoever is in charge of Carnival. <laughs> Bartholomew. Either way, I think it still stands that if we can bring this home, we get 70% of the money. And Nick's leaving out an important detail. Go on. There's a third party in the bidding war. What? what? Hang on. There's three separate cruise ships. Three separate cruise Can lines I be honest? vying for uh, the, the other late, late show. Nick, what's the name of the other one? <laughs> uh, I have to look it up because they didn't direct, they didn't email me directly. They emailed other people. Okay, so what we're saying is there's three different cruise companies. Right. Hey, I don't can 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 the response be this? I don't see the three of them as being mutually exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I say we just go from one boat to the next <laughs> to the next. We'll see the whole world, yep. guys. That's the right way. <laughs> Come on. That's the right way. Come on. Yeah. Hey, Pete, this is a great fit on you, man. This is a great fit on you, Pete. That's great. It's an overshirt. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jen. You got a message for Jen, Pete? Fins up, Jen. Fins up. Fins up. Anyone do anything fun this weekend? What did you do this weekend, Reg? Catch us up. I, uh, I went to Austin, did, did, did Joe Rogan. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then uh, caught up with some Austin friends and then came back on Saturday and had a cool date thing. And then Sunday had a cool session with Kenny Beats and, and then another date. I've never felt so boring. <laughs> What about you, Ian? Any, uh, any weekend plans? What went down? I, uh, I flew to Chicago and I met my girlfriend's parents for the first time. <laughs> Whoa! Okay. Damn! Yo. Okay. Strap in, guys. <laughs> Tell us everything. It was great. Showed up on Friday. I was, I was very charming the entire time. I, I made sure that I, like, uh, there were both my girlfriend and her mom baked different things and I complimented the mom's baking at the expense of my girlfriend. Absolutely the right thing to do. Play that game. Uh, yeah, we had like, we had like a big, we had a couple big dinners, you know? I turned, I turned it up to 11. I'm at a three right now, I would say. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think you've even hit an eight on this show. So you I, at 11, that is... I was at, I was at 11. It's a full Lin set. I had Linda and Michael Schwartz, like, just rolling, rolling in the aisles. It was oh, great. I love that. Yeah. They were, when, fa they were fantastic. They were, they were so nice. It was beautiful. Chicago, Illinois. And then... Chi-Chi. And when did, you, when did you come back? Got back last night. OK. Late and what's been night. the feedback? What's the feedback from Dana? It's been pretty good feedback so far. They, oh. I'm good with parents. I traditionally have been better with parents than I have been... With girlfriends. With girlfriends. Yeah. Well, because you take the baking thing too far. It's one thing to compliment the mum's baking over the girlfriend's, but you often go too far. Where you'll go, this, Mrs. Schwartz, this this pie is beautiful, better than anything you can bake, you piece of. Yeah, yeah. And it just, it's just too much. It's I'm just like, too much. It's like this s'more cookie is amazing. You should walk into the ocean. <laughs> I'm so sorry she's here. I don't know how you could make a cookie this good and a daughter this <laughs> lousy. <laughs> Wowza. Oh, dear. Wowza. I've wow. I've reined it in, though. I've been able well, to rein it in. That's yeah. a big weekend, meeting the in-laws. It was, it was huge. I was pretty nervous for a, for, for a lot of it, but they were lovely. It was wonderful. Her dad gave me this hat, which is Floyd the Barber from the Andy Griffith Show. Which, oh, no way. I didn't think you could get on a hat, but here we are. <laughs> Wait, hang on. You met the in-laws, and you left with a gift. That's right. That's insane to That's me. That's right. That's insane to me. And not eight. just the gift of getting to meet them in person. Oh. <laughs> now he's pandering with the hat. Oh. That's outrageous. <laughs> That's absolutely outrageous. Yeah. Jeez. They, yeah. Wa they watched this show, so it was, it was great. Yeah. They're the ones. <laughs> They're the ones. Wow. <laughs> you know what we're like? I never knew who it was. <laughs> now we know. It's Mr. and Mrs. Schwartz. Her mom sent Pete a shirt. <laughs> Look, I could talk like this for hours, but it's not why it's not why it's not why CBS pay us the big bucks, is it, Nick? No. No. That's not why. <laughs> they don't pay us the, the big bucks to sit around and, and, and 
chat wistfully about the weekends. It's not why the viewers come. They come for the news. <laughs> oh, nice. Little chord change there. You like that one? You've been working on that all weekend. Oh, that's what I've been doing. That's what you've been doing. Yeah. You didn't even leave. You didn't yeah. even leave. You just stayed yeah. here all weekend. Yeah. Dun, dun, <laughs> dun. Well, here is the news. Over the weekend, ransom seeking hackers shut down a major oil pipeline that supplies nearly half of the fuel to the East Coast, meaning there could soon be a shortage of gasoline in the eastern United States. Yes. Look, messing with our elections was one thing, hackers, but you stay away from our pipes. <laughs> This is a lesson, I think. This is why you don't make your pipeline password pipeline underscore 69. <laughs> it's crazy that everything's run by computers now, isn't it? Every within a year, someone's going to be like, sorry, guys, I can't go out tonight. My shoelaces have been hacked. Can't tie them. <laughs> but here's the latest on this story. Now, the hackers, who are known as Darkseid, have issued a strange apology statement saying that they're only interested in money not creating problems for society, and will choose their targets more carefully next time. <laughs> yes! Well, at yes. least they're doing it for the right reasons. Oh. You know it's bad when a group of shadowy, ransom-seeking hackers called Darkseid have suddenly adopted a stricter social policy than Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> and did everybody see this? The Kentucky Derby winner, Medina Spirit, failed a post-race drugs test, meaning the horse could be disqualified from the race. On the bright side, the horse has no idea what's going on. He didn't even know that he was in a race because he's a horse. <laughs> race organisers became suspicious when the horse kept telling people about his screenplay and then going, God, don't you just want to dance? <laughs> Nick, you're into horse racing. Did you did you bet on the Kentucky Derby this year? Uh, I, I didn't. I didn't bet on it this year, but I, I certainly had a, a favorite that, a horse that I liked. It wasn't Medina Spirit. So why didn't you bet on it? I usually only bet on races if I'm at the races. I like the sport in general. Uh, you just enjoy watching the race. Yeah, yeah. He like studies horses. But you don't bet. Not regularly. So you just like the thrill of like, oh, which horse is gonna win? If, if you had to handicap the Carnival, Virgin, or Third Cruise Ship race... <laughs> I really liked the idea of a three-way tie, hopping from ship to ship. Yes. Pete heard the words three-way and went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even hear the word tie. He didn't even hear the word tie. He just heard Nick saying, I like the idea of a three-way. And people went, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In other news, Alabama has come up with a new way to encourage people to get the COVID vaccine. On May 15th, anyone who gets vaccinated or tested at the famous Talladega Super Speedway will get to drive their own car on the track for two laps. They keep coming up with new weird ways to like this to like to get the vaccine do you know what i mean i think they're days away from letting us just touch paintings at art museums <laughs> hey you want to draw little sunglasses on the mona lisa get vaccinated <laughs> up you go buddy go for it <laughs> i love how in most states you've got to sit and wait 15 minutes after your shot just to make sure you don't have an allergic reaction and then in alabama they're like okay here's the shot now make sure you don't at least 90 when you hit that first turn off you go <laughs> And we wanted to tell you about this. According to researchers, nearly two-thirds of Americans say social media platforms are tearing us apart. The other third of Americans went on to tweet, social media is not tearing us apart, and if you think it is, you're an idiot, and you can go ahead right now and unfollow me. <laughs> <laughs> nearly two-thirds of Americans say that social media platforms are tearing us apart. On the other hand, where else are you going to learn that it's the birthday of someone you worked with at a summer job nine years ago? <laughs> Ian, you're active on the socials. Is it tearing us apart? Oh, yeah, it's, it's the worst. It's hell and I hate it, but I keep going for some reason that I could never explain to anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that? Why, why do you keep going? Why? Because, like, every 15th interaction on there is someone like, hey, I work for Lululemon. You want some free pants? And that's the reason. 
That's for me. That's the reason. For me, I keep going back. Do you get free Lululemon gear? I get free Lululemon. No, you don't. Yeah. That's why you went last time you saw me. Ian came to my house. I was in a Lululemon tracksuit. He went, is that Lululemon? Love it, man. Yeah. <laughs> but I bought mine because I'm not there on Twitter. That's why. I got mine for free. It was via Instagram, but we did. We had a little Lulu moment. Yeah. Wow. Trying to become a Lulu brand ambassador. So if we could just leave this in. <laughs> <laughs> can we work on this integration, Nico? I, I will buy all your clothes if we can cut that whole Lulu lemon part out. Of it. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why can't we talk about Lulu lemon? I just, I just don't know if we can. Even What's the beef here, man? Surely, surely there's got to be a little wiggle room now. Not as, oh, not as much wiggle room as a pair of Lululemon stretch fit joggers. <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe Thursday this week we do the show in Lululemon tracksuits. You want to? Absolutely. I'm, I'll be here in one. That's okay, isn't it, Nick? <laughs> I mean, both of you, with the most respect I could possibly say, please go f yourselves right now. Lululemon. Lululemon. Why I, what's the beef here? I'm, I, I'm, I'm sure they're a fine product, but I don't want to talk to sales more than I already do. <laughs> but why, have, why would sales have a problem with this? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't ask for this. I didn't ask for this. And finally, the rendering for a planned 130-foot-tall statue on the Mediterranean island of Cyprus is making headlines because... Well, from a certain angle, the depiction of a kneeling man looks like this. <laughs> Look, everyone's excited, especially the statue. Look at that again. Look, now that's supposed to be his knee, but it must be pretty emasculating for the guy who lives in that house right there. <laughs> the statue would be called the Noble Peasant, which is better than their original name, Penis to Milo. We'll be right back with more of the Late Late Show, everybody.